So hey everybody, here we are at Canadian Forces Base Comox and I am joined by Captain Kent Stanway and we are at 442 Squadron which is the Transport and Rescue Squadron based here in, uh, in Comox uh, and it services uh, Western Canada pretty much. Uh, at least British Columbia, the Yukon and out into the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Captain Stanway, thank you so much for joining me on Go Bold. It's great to have you on this program. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. Glad, glad to be here. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Um, I love the Cormorant. I think it's a beautiful machine. It's, uh, you know, like the size is incredibly impressive. And um, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm really looking forward to you describing a little bit about the machine and, and what you do. Um, but as I do with all of my guests, I start by asking what made you join the military? and what made you pick the branch that you did? Uh, so I think it probably started with my grandfather who was in the uh, RAF. Uh, I had a passion for all things flying, I think, growing up. Uh, I originally joined the military to, to, to fly an aircraft. Uh, at the time it, where I was in Alberta, I ended up joining uh, the signal operators as a reservist at 16. So I did basic training at a pretty young age. Uh, then I went off to the East Coast uh, to Acadia University, where I remustered for the first time to Infantier. Did that for a couple of years, and then uh, out of university joined as a search and rescue technician, actually. So I've been working on this machine for almost a decade now. Uh, I spent about eight years on the East Coast as a SAR tech. Uh, so being hoisted out of this and uh, doing missions both out of this and the Hercules at uh, 413 in Greenwood and then just out of this in uh, Gander and it was in Gander that I decided to try and move from the back of the bus to the front of the bus and so I graduated with wings in 2022 and I got posted here to 442 and am uh, in the process of upgrading as aircraft commander. That is awesome. So how how difficult was it? So if I have you correct, you went from a, a ground force or army path into the Air Force, and then you went from being a SAR tech now to being a pilot. Yeah. Um, those are some pretty big jumps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely, uh, yeah, one of one, I guess. It's well, not... <laughs> one of one, yeah, right on. It's not often a stream that most people take. But, right, uh... right, right, yeah, kind of unique for sure. Um, was it difficult or, or did the... Yeah, both paths are very difficult and very different in their challenges. I find SARTEC is uh, a much more physical uh, challenge, but... Uh... You also need the cerebral aspect with the, the medical protocols that they run uh, in the back. And then with uh, being a pilot, uh, it's much busier and you're, you're definitely task switching up front. Right, right. Well, you know, I think one of, the, one of the cool aspects to your past is the fact that having been a SAR tech, it gives you an appreciation for the entire uh, mission because not only are, do you know what the SAR techs need, to do what they have to do, but now from a pilot's perspective, you know, I guess you've got a really good perspective here. Yeah, it was the reason why I wanted to come back to the community, uh, as opposed to flying uh, another asset. Uh, I think I, I bring a lot of experience having been in the back, so, and knowing what it's like underneath this machine. You can see with uh, the size of it, it puts down quite a bit of rotor wash, so yeah. very, very hard to work under. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I love about the Cormorant, I call it the Cormorant whistle. I don't know what it is, but it's got a very distinct kind of a, a wisp to yeah. it. And, and yeah, I just think it's super cool. Well, let's take a quick walk around of the For Cormorant sure. and, uh, and then you can give me a quick tour inside if you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks. So when we initially uh, took uh, delivery of the Cormorant, there was a little bit of a tail issue. I don't think they uh, made as as robust a tail rotor as they should have. So what we see now is a more uh, beefy, for lack of a better word, uh, tail rotor. Right. Which is a good thing. Yes, absolutely. So this is uh, obviously the all weather variant. Obviously we're in Canada. We need the ability to, to go into uh, really crappy weather. Mm -hmm. So you'll see on the leading edges of all the blades the, uh, the anti-ice system that we have, both on the tail rotor and the mains. Um, so in a walk around, uh, most of the techs have done all of the work for me. I'm just checking a few things. 
uh, making sure the fire suppression hasn't been used, making sure that I can see uh, that the, uh, the dampening springs on the main rotors are, are green. Just checking for any extra leaks. Like all aircraft, they, uh, they, do, um, they do drain a little bit, but uh, I'm looking for anything more significant than that. Like they say, I think in, when it comes to aircraft, uh, if it's not leaking, it's empty. Exactly. Right? <laughs> I'll be looking inside the windows for any, uh, for any fod near the pedals. Um, and again, checking the fire suppression system here, the hooks, making sure they, uh, they look good. Awesome, and that's, that's really important to note. As a search and rescue aircraft, um, you can, I, in theory, Sartex can jump out the back end if, you've, if you're at high enough altitude, but typically I think it's mostly with... Uh, with yeah, so the, the reason we, um, we uh, certified it for jumping is it is, a, it is a good jumping platform, there is a ramp, uh, it's really just uh, to help out with the search and rescue technicians' currencies. Right. Uh, it, there's really no sense in using it operationally. We'll okay. use the hoist or land. Okay. Right. So, oh, yeah, right. Of course. Yeah. That's the beauty of the helicopter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, why jump uh, out when you can just land? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it just uh, it makes it a little bit more uh, uh, easier for them to keep their currencies for jumping. Yeah. If the Herc has any kind of maintenance issues, then we can take them up in this. Yeah, right on. Yeah, yeah. a little bit of redundancy. That's yeah. awesome. And so uh, I don't know how much your audience knows about the aircraft, but uh, it does have an APU. Basically, all that uh, does is produce a massive amount of bleed air, which is what we use to start the other three engines. Right. So, right. Uh, like you were mentioning, it is uh, it is unique in that it has a full ramp. This makes uh, ingress and and egress a lot easier for for patient loading and uh, and such. Right on. Awesome. Awesome. Let's take a quick peek inside. Sounds good. Yeah. So uh, we carry an extra life, life raft inside as well as in the spots in there. Mm -hmm. uh, this is because uh, the aircraft kitted out with just stretchers can carry 12 passengers, including the crew. Uh, if it was rigged with just seats, we could take 30. In real emergencies, you could really put about 45 people in this machine. Wow. So you got to have enough life rafts for, for that many people. Right. So. So uh, this is configured for search and rescue. This is uh, what you would see normally on the day-to-day. -day. We run a crew of five, two pilots up front, flight engineer sits in this seat, and then you've got your two Sartex just behind the, the pilots up front. we got the uh, rescue basket with two ropes that we use to help guideline uh, both it and the Stokes, which is up top here. Um, you can see the anchor points that... Uh, that the uh, crew uses in the back to make sure they're secure when the when the rescue door is open or the the ramp. Uh, we have a Ferno cot here with some oxygen. Uh, that's a new procured item uh, within the last five or so years to uh, to make it easier to offload uh, patients. Right on. Okay. You gonna hop in here? Yeah. Or? Yeah. I'll Perfect. Hop in. Yeah. Okay. Quick look back and quick look forward. Awesome. awesome. And to your to your, or I guess to my right. Yeah. So this is the this is the the gear. So we have some emergency kits uh, for the crew if uh, it's a bad day. Otherwise, it's all medical kit for the the two Sartex. So uh, they got two penetration kits. That's what they call them. They're full of medical gear, AED, which is. Um, Basically a defibrillator right. um, is the, the term. We got yep. some mountain kits, uh, an extra stretcher, snowshoes, anything you would need, essentially. Right, because here in British Columbia, you're going from sea level all the way up to mountains. You got to do it all. You got to do it all. Yeah, Absolutely. Right on. So yeah, this would be team member, team lead. They got the two bubble windows for searching. Um, and then coming up front, this is uh, the new office, I guess. You're right, your office now. 
So, uh, like uh, most helicopters, both controls do the same thing. They're interconnected to the to the uh, control surfaces. So if you move one, the other one's going to move. That's correct. Yeah, right. They're coupled. Yep. Awesome. We both have our individual CCUs, but they do talk to each other. CCU being the, the main spot that we can uh, run calculations for what we can expect for torque margins in the hover. Um, we have, as you can see, six uh, CRT screens that give us our engine info in the middle, and then our attitude indicator and nav screen. Okay. Um, and in terms of performance, how would you describe flying the Cormorant? This thing has a ridiculous amount of power. Cool. It, uh, it will climb very fast. Uh, it's got energy for days, and so it also takes quite a bit to slow it down because it's got <laughs> a lot of momentum. So right. it's, uh, it's unique. It's, um, it's got uh, autopilot uh, ace is what we call it, and it, uh, it helps stabilize the machine. That's why when you see it in air shows, it's so stable in the, in the hover uh, because we're getting a lot of help from servos that trim out any of the inconsistencies. And so then we're, we're really just putting in minute inputs in order to, to keep it where we want it. Right on. Awesome. And so now, uh, Kent, this, uh, the entire Cormorant fleet in Canada is going to be upgraded uh, under the Cormorant Midlife Upgrade uh, Program. And so that means you're going to get a brand new cockpit. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be uh, it'll be a full glass cockpit. These are actually <laughs> the uh, the old CRT screens, so they go back quite a bit. It's not uh, your modern day plasma. So right. the new screens will be uh, much cleaner, um, and and size wise will be bigger. From my understanding, we will get uh, full FADEC engines, so a little bit more uh, computer aiding there, better weather radar. And we will have infrared, which will be super useful for searching. Yeah, I think that's one of the key distinctions that perhaps our viewers should know. Um, the Cormorant, as it is right now, does not have any sensors uh, to aid in search and rescue. So it's all kind of looking out the window and, and working jointly with the... Yeah. Uh, with the fixed wing search and rescue aircraft and you can see the the new one in the view on the on the left here that is the CC295 Kingfisher which is going to be coming online for the Royal Canadian Air Force uh, that replaced the Buffalo uh, and it will also replace the Hercules um, but that aircraft has a lot of sensors and as the Cormorant gets upgraded uh, correct me where I'm wrong Kent but it's going to have um, Electro-optical infrared, as you mentioned, uh, and it's also going to have uh, a synthetic aperture radar mm -hmm. as well, which will be pretty cool because it'll give you a lot more uh, search capability uh, instead of you know just using uh, your eyes to look out the window. Yeah, absolutely, super useful. It's uh, it is quite difficult searching for people in the water, so to have these uh, these tools uh, to aid us in that, uh, I think we'll be able to affect uh, rescues a lot faster. We're get through the search phase faster. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Using thermal differential, I think, is going to be a big plus. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Uh, so uh, those aircraft, the first one is yet to be inducted into the uh, into the upgrade process, but uh, I know that work is well underway. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, I guess uh, I'm sure you're probably going to be excited to fly yeah, that. Pretty excited for sure. It's uh, it's got a lot more bells and whistles for sure. Yeah, and I, I guess uh, maybe it'll just in terms of the new avionics and systems it'll just help you do your job even more efficiently yeah i think again it's it's really uh it's helping uh, reduce pilot workload and uh, just allows us to focus on uh, on the overall mission just uh, a little bit better yeah right on well kent thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me here on go bold it's been a great pleasure to have you on the program and uh and yeah, thank you for uh, for showing off your uh, your new office. Okay, my pleasure. Awesome, thank you, sir. Okay. Woo! Screen to uh, increase the odds for uh, getting uh, someone to the, the fast jet that we see there parked.